can go there. Go through the documents he's currently put on his page about a contract that was signed by uh, Mr. Ken Ofoyata on exiting before he exited the finance ministry. Good morning, and I hope you're well. Hi, good morning, sir. I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm also doing well. I'm also doing well. Now, uh, let's start by you telling us this story. What is it about? Good morning to all the distinguished listeners of Radio Gold. So this latest expose is about the Honorable Ken Ofuriata's patent gift, if you like, when he was leaving the ministry, specifically on the 9th of February. Remember that he was reshuffled on the 14th of February. So he must have known that he was about to exit. On his way out, he thought that all of what he has done to us is not enough. He has to give us the final blow, uh, if you like, the final nail in our coffin. So he approved a $34.9 million ambulance spare pass deal. You had right, $34.9 million. $34.9 million, you, not cities. Not cities. So this okay. this is you're, you're talking about spare pass, uh, spare pass yes, for spare ambulances, pass. not the ambulances themselves. No, not the ambulance. Ghana is not going to buy new ambulance. If you read the the, the approval letter, it is for spare pass. He was very very clear. The spare pass for mm. the for the old three hundred and seven ambulances that President Akufuado commissioned mm. in twenty nineteen. Now. If you look at this $34.9 million mm. at, at today's exchange rate, we are talking, uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are speaking about 538 million Ghana cities. That is the conversion if you do the exchange rate. That's a Ghana like, cities equivalent of the, yes, the cost of a Ghana contract. Cities of the $34.9 million for the, for the spare parts. Um, the sad news is that the sad news is that uh, my unimpeachable tracking of the transaction reveals that already $10 million has been paid. $10 million out of the 349 uh, And that is 120.7 million Ghana cities so, has already been paid. So the, that, that's about one third of the contract sum. That has yes, already sadly, been paid to sadly, the company in question. Sadly, yes. Sadly, the company in question, which is a very shady company, very dubious. If you read the Auditor General's report, and I'm not saying this because I dislike the company or I have an axe to grind with the company. These are the conclusions drawn by the Auditor General. The Auditor General in 2022 did an audit of this company's work and they are conduct with the maintenance of the ambulances. That Auditor General's report is still available online. All your listeners can go download that report. It is such a damning report that even the Auditor General concludes that this company owes Ghana. This company must refund money to Ghana. This company doesn't have adequate staff. They use staff of National Ambulance Service and yet they collect the money. They inflate their invoices according to the Auditor General. This is a company that uses our ambulances when it comes to them for servicing. They use it to carry cement and other things. Damning, damning. This is a company that should have been blacklisted. When they engaged this company, it wasn't even registered. They went to register later. They engaged them for eight months before they even signed a contract with them. So clearly this is a very special crony company. They just handpicked them. Look, this is a country that has, if we are talking about Mercedes-Benz, we have authorized the 
been incorporated in April 2020. So when you are aware of this Auditor General's report, copies of which were given to all ministers and members of parliament, how on earth, if you love Ghana, kind of data, how on earth do you approve and even bigger, and you see, if you do the analysis, and I've gone for all the payments that have been done to this company, between 2020 and 2023, they have been paid 115 million Ghana cities in old contracts, mm, their previous maintenance deals. So how on earth do you leave in office a few days to go, you decide that you will give these folks something much, much bigger, you know, than they have ever received. $34.9 million, over 530 million Ghana cities. And you immediately instruct that $10 million should be paid before you left office. Now, my brother, what is even so worrying, if you do the basic arithmetic, you do a basic division, you do the analysis, this $34.9 million, it means that Ghana is going to spend $113,695.45 per ambulance. So let's say $113,000 on each ambulance. Can you believe that for spare parts? This $113,000, I have gone on the Mercedes-Benz website. If you are looking for ambulances, you can get a modern, fully equipped, new ambulance at this amount. They are even offers way below this amount. At $80,000, $70,000, you can get fully equipped, modern ambulance. It's just that the size may be, you know, in terms of features, if you want more features, if you want a bigger size, then it keeps going up and up. Well, we have lost almost some of the to black one there. Um, uh, please, okay. Let, let, let's see if we can get him back on this issue. Now, this involves ambulances, uh, ambulances that are so. He says there's per pass alone for each ambulance. If you're doing per ambulance, you're looking at one hundred and thirteen. Honorable, hello. We, we lost you there. Yes, yes, yes. So I was saying that if you go on several websites, Mercedes Benz, Toyota, Ford, all those companies. Uh, noted globally for being ambulance providers and you tell them you have $113,000 you will be shocked at how beautiful, how modern, how fully equipped uh, the ambulance package they will offer to you uh, will look like so how is it that Ghana becomes the only country under this corrupt Akufuado Baumia government where $113,000. We are not talking about procuring new, latest, state-of-the-art, fully equipped ambulances. We are just talking about spare parts. Spare parts. I mean, how? How? Spare parts. And you read the 2022 Auditor General's report, and this is a company which ought to have been blacklisted. They should not be receiving government contracts after all they have done. I mean, a company that carries cement with your ambulance when you have sent it to them to fix. A company that doesn't have staff and uses staff of the National Ambulance Service. A company that inflates invoices. And you see, when you read the Auditor General's report, I would really plead that you download it and take your time and read it to your listeners. Their management, you know that when auditors do their work, they would ask for management response. In the management response, which they publish, the National Ambulance Service would not challenge anything. They said, look, we accept all your findings. We will take steps to, to, to implement them. The management of the National Ambulance Service had no counter. They had nothing else to say. I have seen a lot of audited accounts. The management will say, oh, uh, we challenge this. You didn't consider this document. 
or you didn't pay attention to this fact, uh, it is not really uh, accurate what you have uh, found out. You don't see anything like that in this case. So how is it possible for such a shady company engaging in all of this horrible, horrible conduct that causes financial loss to the state? Then you are going to give them an even bigger contract. You have already wasted our 150 million Ghana cities on these guys. 150 million Ghana cities. One, one, five. One, yes. At the time, contractors are saying government is not paying them. Some of them have laid off, some of them have closed their businesses. At the time that there are so many strikes, CTAC and others are on strike, the tutors at the colleges of education, government says they don't have money. And yet, as for this company, which is clearly so special, and very soon Ghanaians will know why, I have just reserved the linkage between the directors and those in government. I've just reserved that uh, because I didn't want it to distract from the unconscionable nature of the contract. But Ghanaians will soon discover why this company is so special to President Akufuadu and Ken Ofuriata, and they will pay them promptly and now give them this really terrible sweetheart deal, $34.9 million for spare parts. I mean, where does this happen? And the irony is that this is a government that is prosecuting people that they have caused 2.3 million euros uh, financial loss. And the Honorable Atu Fosin has been roped in and is being harassed all over the place. 2.3 million euros. 2.3. Hmm? Now we are talking about 34.9 million dollars. Spare pass. No due diligence. No value for money. No recourse to the Public Procurement Act. This was not a competitive tender process. I mean, it's incredible. It's incredible. $113,000 dollars for each ambulance, for spare parts. I don't know where, whether the spare parts are coming from heaven. I, I, I don't know. I see. Very interesting. The, the first contract you said was captured in the Auditor General's report that they paid 150 million Ghana cities. Uh, for which period was this amount paid? So this was paid within the period 2020 to 2023, mm -hmm. within a three-year period. Okay, 2020 to 2023. Yes. Okay. And the new sum of $10 million is uh, for a different arrangement. That's for a different arrangement starting February this year. Ken of Rata authorized that on the 9th of February, five days before he left the office. And the first payment of the $10 million out of the $34.9 million uh, hit the accounts of this company on the 23rd of February, 2024. That's very interesting because as part of your, and I was doing some checks myself, and as part of the documents you uploaded, the ambulances themselves cost $133,000 according to the sums quoted yes. by the government itself. Yes, yes, you're right. And and this $133,000, if you you read the minister's statement that she put out at the time, the Special Development Initiative Minister, it includes the insurance, it includes the uh, premium insurance, it includes um, what they paid for shipping and everything. So there are all the add-ons, everything, is what comes to the 133000 And yes, spare pass is 113000 and you know, even this papers analysis I have done, you know I've been very generous because if you read the Auditor General's report, they tell us that about 16 of the ambulances have been involved in accidents and are not available. So it means that the denominator, you know, will have to be reduced. It's no longer 307 uh, ambulances. But I just decided to be generous with my analysis. So it's, it's, in actual sense, it is even higher that the $113,000 per ambulance, just for spare parts. If they had told us that they were buying additional ambulances, 
Because really, if you are going to spend this on spare parts, and we cannot even guarantee whether these spare parts, when it is fixed, it will work or not, it will, it will give us, you know, uh, a good functionality and all that. You know how these things are. It's not every spare parts, every effort at repairing, which you may be lucky sometimes, sometimes you may not be lucky, you still will have issues. You probably made the wrong diagnosis. That's not probably even the spare parts that you needed to procure. You know, so if you are going to spend all these monies, which can give you the latest state of the art ambulance, why not rather buy new ambulances? But because this is chop chop, this is great loot and share, nobody is even thinking properly. Nobody is thinking properly. If you have all this money for ambulances, then just buy new ambulances. Just buy new ambulances. It's as simple as that. Now, now the company in question, in, in fact, when you look at the document, they were incorporated in um, April 2020. You said before that they had a contract. Yes. Before the we incorporation. That, yes, before they were incorporated, they had a contract for January. January 2020. Started servicing the vehicles, working in earnest in January. Four <laughs> months before they were incorporated. And then, so four months before the and company then, came and then, into and then you know you know how they did it they just called them that hey you people come come and take over take control of the ambulances so it was eight months after that they signed an agreement with them that they entered into a contract with them can you believe that no <laughs> that's what happened <laughs> no, 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 that's okay so you're saying that before they were incorporated they had a four contract. months they, no they had no. started work so they started work before they were incorporated mm -hmm. okay they just call them, call the acronyms. Hey, you guys, hey, the ambulances are in, you know. Um, come, and, come and take control. Uh, you are in charge of servicing. You know, they hadn't uh, been registered. So they work for four months, then they go and uh, register. You know, it reminds me of what they did in the Frontiers. You know, the Frontiers uh, uh, scandal, the COVID testing um, scandal at the airport. That's what they were working for many months before they went to get registered. So, same modus operandi. Uh, I mean, they don't believe in the rule of law. They are very lawless, you know, and they act with impunity. Then, uh, after that four months, when they got registered, they worked again another four months before somebody said, oh, you know, this engagement with these guys, we need to have a contract too, because on what basis are we paying them? You know, so eight months after is when they signed a contract with them. It's all in the Auditor General's report. Very shocking. And this involved, you're talking about this involving $150 million for yes. the initial contract period. Yes. And they yes. had no contract from the very beginning. They were not incorporated. And government still went ahead and did yes. business with them? Yes. Wow. Yes. And you say you know why. Because you've seen documents that tell you exactly why this company got that sweetheart arrangement. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Why? Oh, yes. They are very, very special people to President Akufuado. Very special. In fact, I've been Dr. looking at Kenofuado. the names of the directors. And uh, on, on a cursory on a look, it's difficult to tell how special they are. <laughs> you, will soon, you will soon see how, how special they are. Have you seen a name there called uh, Stephen Okoro? Yes, I, I saw that name. Yes, so keep an eye on that name. Stephen Okoro? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Stephen? Yes, Stephen. Hmm. He's a very, very, very special young man to the president. I see. Special to the president himself. And the president's family. Okoro, dear, what is the connection between Okoro and Akufuado and Oforiata family? Because the names do not even, Okoro suggests somebody who may even be Nigerian. You will soon find out. I see. Hmm. Oh, in the meantime, you, 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 you say you have petitioned the OSP on, over this? Yes. So yesterday at 4 p.m., I was at the office of the special prosecutor and uh, I have petitioned special prosecutor. I have shared all the
the intercepted documents with the special prosecutor. Uh, our aim is to uh, stop this deal. Uh, unfortunately for us, $10 million has been paid already, but we have the power to stop the $24.9 million, which is about to be paid. Uh, remember, it's a $34.9 million sweetheart deal. We also want all those who have engaged in these corrupt acts to be sanctioned. We want them prosecuted. Uh, so we want the special prosecutor to launch um, a corruption investigation into this matter. And we want him to also stop further payments so that at least we can save some money uh, for the people of this country. See how Ghanaians are suffering. I mean, the many communities without portable water, the many people going to hospital this morning, and there are no MRIs, there are no X-rays, there are no incubators. People are still delivering on the bare floor. I mean, this is money. And you see, we are talking about health sector. This is spare parts for the health sector, ambulances in the health sector. If you look at the priorities, hmm, the crisis with health delivery in our country. Look at how people are dying because they don't have dialysis machines. They can't afford dialysis cost. You know, this is money that can be used more productively in all of those sectors to save lives. Instead of a great loot and share scheme where people stand to pocket, you know, thousands and millions of dollars for, for no work done, this cannot be accepted. Have you okay? So why the choice as a special prosecutor, if the intention is to stop the deal from going ahead? Why do you believe that's the best platform to go through? Because of the blatant corruption, I've been looking at the mandate of the special prosecutor, and because of the naked, naked corruption, um, that is why we we are we are using that that route. You remember the last time on the Snate hotels, I used Shraj because uh, that was conflict of interest. And if you look at the Constitution. If it's about conflict of interest, uh, the forum is shrug. And if you look at the OSP Act, if it's about corruption and corruption related offenses, uh, you come to the OSP. So that is what informs um, the choice of the of the OSP. But as you do know, that does not also preclude uh, further action on this matter in Parliament. So I can confirm to you that I have uh, filed an urgent question seeking to summon the Health Minister because so far uh, they have been tight-lipped. Uh, none of them is speaking. They were hoping that this deal will go through quietly behind the scenes and uh, they would not be caught out. I don't know how, they, how long they thought that they could get away with this. Uh, so I'm seeking to drag the Health Minister to Parliament uh, to answer questions on this deal. Uh, but uh, the strategy is to adopt a multi-pronged approach. So whilst the special prosecutor is investigating, and what I like about the special prosecutor's powers is that he has the power to, to actually stop a transaction, uh, to go to court and to uh, insist that some payment should not be made and all of that. Uh, so he has some preliminary powers that he can exercise and, and because there is a looming uh, payment that is, uh, if you look at how, how they are hurriedly going through this deal if we don't take swift action they will, before we realize all the monies have been paid and it will look like you know you are now uh, 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 going after uh, if you like spilled milk Going after horses who have left, left the stable, who have bolted, that, that becomes more difficult. So that is our strategy to adopt a multi pronged approach, see what the OSP can do in stopping payments, and then in Parliament, we will also uh, subject the ministers responsible to uh, further scrutiny. Let me add also that the Minister for Finance, uh, even though the, the old one who really did this is virtually gotten away, uh, at least so far as parliamentary standing orders are concerned, because you can't invite a former minister to answer questions. You can only invite the current minister under our rules. So we will get the new finance minister to, to also come answer uh, 
and see what we can get out of him in terms of what their thought processes were when they approved uh, such a such a horrible deal. At least he was he was a uh, there was a minister of state at the time of the ministry. So um, let's see what he knows about this uh, when he appears before us in the, in the next few days. Uh, we'll, we'll be waiting to hear what he says, what explanations he gives. In the meantime, uh, in terms of res as responses go, um, are you happy with the responses you are getting from the lands minister to the issues you raise about the sales of lands? I'm certainly not happy at all. This lands minister and the lands commission are clearly part of the problem. And they seek to engage in obfuscation and cheap partisanship to distract from our fight against state capture. The Lands Minister has put out a lot of information which is not accurate. For example, what he has said about the Parks and Gardens land in Wa, claiming that there's been a rezoning. There has been no rezoning. I mean, they are just trying to aid private developers to steal land. That's what is going on. And this lands commission and this lands minister, they should know that the day of reckoning is coming. Are you aware that when the Ghana Prison Service is fighting a battle of its lifetime to protect land at Roman Ridge, their own land at the Boston Institute, the lands commission is busy writing to the courts that they are on the side of the individual who is a senior advisor to Dr. Balmia by name Professor Apiedu. They are on his side and that he truly owns the land and that the Ghana Fire Service doesn't have a case. Really? Can you believe that? I mean the Ghana Prison Service doesn't have a case. So they are That's backing the, the case yes. of Dr. Apiedu in court? Yes, in court. That's what the Lands Commission is doing. That's what this Lands Minister is doing. And now thanks to what the Lands Minister has done, the statement that he issued, the private developer who has encroached the parks and gardens land in Wa has gone to court with those documents seeking an injunction, trying to stop the local government minister who came to parliament and assured us that he was going to take steps to remove that, that, that property from the parks and gardens park. It's the same, the same way in the cantonments parks and gardens case when the local government minister has assured us in parliament that the land belongs to government, they are going to do everything to take those containers off. And, it, and actually, the, the local government minister took the containers out of the parks and gardens land. And yet, the lands minister issues a statement that, oh, these lands have been sold since 2012, and it was finalized in 2016. If it was finalized in 2016, how is it that in 2021, your government sought to build an office complex on that same piece of land. In 2021, five years after. So you have a situation where the lands minister and the lands commission, if you read the Bulgaria embassy report, which I have now intercepted, remember that under their watch, two diplomatic missions came under attack, the Nigerian high commission and the Bulgaria embassy, because of this whole state capture this land looting, insatiable appetite for greed. We now have a situation where the sole inquirer is revealing that the Lands Commission conspired with those who went to demolish the, the, the Bulgarian embassy. And the reason why the Lands Minister was concealing that report is that he wanted to protect his officials at the Lands Commission. He didn't want to take action. Now we have the full report, and the report is very clear. People at the Lands Commission are complicit with this Jojo Hagan guy who was also working with Akufado's appointee at the NDPC because he's due to benefit. Dr. Yaweduan Poma, who interestingly is the star witness in the Opuni case, government star witness. So they demolish the, the Bulgaria embassy, and then Akufuado's appointee takes over. And he, is, 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 he says he's going to build apartments there. It has actually started. Now here we are. We have to pay compensation, 5.3 million cities, to the Bulgarians. And 
the government says they cannot find Jojo Hagan. So the Bulgarians have said their patience is running thin and that soon they will insist that government pays them the money. I mean, so you have a lands commission that is on the side of those who are raping this country, those who are plundering, those who are looting our lands, who are engaged in state capture, and the lands minister is giving them cover. This lands minister also sought to claim in his statement that the WEB Du Bois Center is not aware of anything that has gone on there, and is still for Ghana. The minister is not aware that on the 22nd September, his colleague ministers, the foreign minister, and the attorney general signed a transfer agreement transferring the Du Bois Center to a private foundation for 50 years, 50 good years. And I have all the documents, I have the 46 page agreement, which I have published. So look, this lands minister is so dishonest. The lands commission is engaging in a lot of dishonesty, a lot of unscrupulous conduct as confirmed by the Justice of Uriata report. Hello, Honorable. Hello? Ah, we seem to have lost Honorable Samuel Okuja to Ablakwa. Um, on the line once again. I, 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 I think uh, we can leave it here. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, thank Honorable Okuja to Ablakwa for, uh, for us. Uh, I think that's, that's a detailed response on the lands issue and also uh, a further response uh, to what is published currently. Um, if, if you go through the documents that he's published, very, very interesting things. If you read through um, some of the things that are said are quite shocking, but not so shocking, because you see that through many of the contracts that have made news recently. I don't know why I keep for, forgetting. Is it SML Ghana? Yes. If you go through the SML Ghana matter, we see virtually the same thing, where registration does not, you see, SML gets contract before registration. In fact, SML starts operating before contract. SML then goes and, and you see, all these arrangements are, are so similar in terms of the way they are operated. And this one, he says, from everything he's reading, is the same approach. Same, same approach. Nothing different. Same approach. So you just have to go to his Facebook page. I wanted to just get a few things and read to you uh, some of the things that he's, he's put on his Facebook page. I'll, I'll get some of those documents and go through them for you. Yeah, it's no Zika, baby. Before we continue, if you're a parent or a guardian listening to me, ensure Charles' vision is crystal clear, ready for the new school year. Join us for Kiri I Care Day. A fair I Care Vision Center. Dates 26th August to 30th August 2024. 26th August. 26th, 26th August to 30th August 2024. Time is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The venue. Airport Residential Area Opposite Mirage Residence, the third eye care and vision center branch at Airport Residential Opposite Mirage Residence, and also the North Ridge branch on the Sunny FM premises. For just 100 Ghana cities registration fee, 
your child age 17 and below receive the following free eye examination free glasses free eye drops don't miss out on this amazing opportunity to ensure to ensure your child's eye health is in top shape good vision is essential for their learning and development they need their eyes call now to register 24 59 give your child the gift of clear vision and a brighter future. Terms and conditions apply. Third Eye Care Vision Center, your tutor eye care solutions provider. 100 Ghana cities. And give your child age 17 and below free eye examination, free eye glass, free glasses, free eye drops. They get older for just 100 Ghana cities. Note the dates 26th August to 30th August 2024. The animal rights lawyer. Thank you. Oh, say we be born young, be honorable can we coro no? Oh, just we be born young, be coro. You they see what I they see? There's a new girl in town. Oh, just any one No, no, I've heard that song. Ah. I know that song. <laughs> so can we coro? Pen I'm saying, su we coro no. Is it in car? In car say or something? Who did that? Me name your boy there, but oh, oh, they also and one of them. Ben can say wait, there are two. Mm. But I think one of them featured on the song. Yeah. Is it in car say? Okay, I think that's it. Yeah, Kukuru. yeah. yeah. If you papa race or say happy birthday, and comma, Clegg Odui Kenny Tepe, aka Soja. Okay, or, or a student, or oh, a peak lyceum. Mm. And I'm not born the same. School now near Brez and Lyceum and Lyceum. How would I know? <laughs> yeah, I went to Sugar Copper Lip by my age. I think lyceum. it's Lyceum, yeah. Uh huh, it's, it's Lyceum. A uh, peak Lyceum, mm. our community 22. Uh, Eh? Lie, Sion. Lie, Sion. Eh? Ne de Eh, L-Y. Say it. Move on. L-Y. Move on. C-E. Uh, uh, he, please, <laughs> if, they, if he mispronounces your... Lie, Sion. Lie, Sion. Hey, I didn't know me, me boy, you are no emo, emo, me different you. You see how we would have failed? Me boy, you are no emo, me different one said the Eric Ah... Ah. So you, you 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 check. Yes, I check. <laughs> and what what were you told? Lyceum. Lyceum. Okay. Lyceum. <laughs> Pick Lyceum. Your school <laughs> the name of your school is problematic. Small. Uh, it, and you see this one is in is. Do you know what it is? Nursery, kindergarten, primary. They haven't even got into JHS yet. Too. Hey. Their school alone is confusing. Oh. The name of the school is is a problem. Papa Reese school need in in there. The name of the the, the, the child again. Uh, yeah, uh, Montessori school. Yeah. Uh, the name of the when child. one student one teacher. No. Uh, you see Montessori yes. in the class say <laughs> first in a name Montessori Montessori. When you say Montessori school, be are welcome no teacher back up and quarter be brave. The name of the the child again. Uh, Clegg Odoi Kenny Tekpe. Clegg Odoi uh -huh. Kenny Tekpe. Yeah. Okay. Clegg uh -huh. Odoi Kenny Tekpe. Yeah. Okay. Okay. A.K.A. Soja. Okay. And uh, we uh, Chris Kojo Mani. Mm. Chris Kojo Mani. Uh, where are they? Elder, elder brother of a uh, year. Well, so that uh, is, a, is a dedication coming from Aram Dolafia. Uh, okay. To me his elder brother. Elder brother. Okay. Uh, mm. Okay. Well, give, give me, give me. Oh, yeah, my for way more. No, no, no. Give me. Ah, uh, so, that, this is a, so you just said a happy birthday to uh, Clerk Kenny uh, Yeah. Okay. Clark, happy Clark. birthday to you, and also happy birthday to Chris Kojo Money. Chris Kojo Money. You are the older brother of Aram Dolafia. He says we should say a happy, happy birthday to you, Chris, and also happy birthday to Jennifer Myers of Bowie. Jennifer Myers of Bowie. Jennifer hey, Myers. Hmm. This one is is intruding into Patrick's territory. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> and also, a happy birthday uh -huh. uh, to Adelaide Semenyo Amagache. Adelaide Semenyo Amagache. Your uncle says we should say a happy, happy birthday to you. You are at East Legon. You are a student of the University of Ghana Medical School. You, but you are at East Legon. You are a student of the University of Ghana Medical School. Final year. Uh, your uncle says uh, we should tell you that all he asks is for God's wisdom and long life from your uncle somewhere in the bush mm. in Takwa. Uh, somewhere in the bush in Takwa. In Takwa. Uh -huh. Ah, oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> you know the uncle? Yeah, my uh, uncle. And you can PC about four, and a PC about your banner, but some of the coffee tree, 
na ene man ko yi mfa ma pa cho de no e poor flow e ma yi ana se o de no e bia na e severe pain sa e mo ntimi ko ba bia e ye pcia ba hope ene se de ben o e ko o yo be ma so na bo e ye e enwumre dru na o betimi e wurura o de ontimi wurura ano pa o awia o ontimi wurura no se o da ho sa de apa cho wan hwe ya da cho mi beken kan o bible e de ama pa ma brother hu ni nyina ye ntimi ye ko pcia ba na ma mezima on to me a more behind closed door matches no na edi jinny na siaria bain and a air how i for each mu ewo pc eba your award-winning herbal clinic ewo last stop west seventh west african traditional alternative medical award 2024 pc eba and then 24 born about to say the most promising a prostate disease treatment center of the year and to it yeah say goodbye to back pain waist pain and our fears no a yet prostate related conditions you know okay pc eba la enkran ha Oni Medina Social Welfare Gate in a dear new share, Sanson attack radisono, or any Air Force Station Basic School in a dear new share. PCA ba Obetina Frame, I mean, my true for you so, a 0540 740 740 0540 740 and I say 0542 995 997. 0542 995 997. Patch of PCA ba air delivery services within and outside Ghana. PC ba or sit one time quick. Sanso and a opa sa se ato dia. Men fwen in chebe biya anko nko ta sa se o wa pa cho e chile no. Eh wa wo di wa sa se suna winti min koso. Eh be bi ba kope en ame kanfo dia ma wo. Eh trusted real estate company ba kope en a biti min ato sa se e wo mho. Spa cho omu no nyen sa se nko anon mo ton. Wo miye building and construction roofing architectural drawings en a fi su no. Eh biodigester services ni anon. Wo mu eh bi. Eh hat builders real estate. Hat Builders Real Estate litigation free land with flexible payment plan. Pacho pasa sini biato a twenty thousand and twenty five thousand Ghana cedis. I will subenye bioho. Chopoli ugita thirty thousand Ghana cedis a. Ningo pram pram twenty five thousand Ghana cedis. Ye hiya ni se obe tuwa siye kakra fifty percent of diama diaka no busumi nsiya yeche gusu e diama mo timi tiyani kakra kakra kakra. Pacho o shomo a wamo e o e a shaman opposite kaketu junction wa onsa ebe timi aka Hat Builders Real Estate. Obe timi afromu, oh ma true fui, eso eye 0593-244-322, 0593-244-322, and I say 0591-599-006, 0591-599-006. Hat builders real estate, I'm say building the future together. Mm. Now, um, what of our... So he used to do this job. He's retired now. Uh, Mr. Kumson says, I'm enjoying your phonetic drills on the word August. It will be well very soon. Keep on keeping on. You know, <laughs> he, he, he always keeps quiet. I don't know where I learned how to say August. I don't know how it, it all started because August. that's not how you pronounce it when we're at uh, Suga Kupeli Primary. Oh, baby. Uh, is it the S or the Lai? Lai Sium. You went to which school? Uh, PPS RC. Thank you. <laughs> is it the simple? <laughs> simple. PPS what? RC. Thank you. Whether it's primary school, it's JHS, you know, because it's PPS RC. When we're going to school, say, which school are you going to? Uh, primary A. Uh, that's all. <laughs> but the worst part is when, when they say, well, what is the name of your school? And your friend is asking you, primary, uh, do you start with P or T? Uh -huh. yeah, like the starting. Uh -huh. The man says that. He's asking you uh -huh. whether the starting is primary or primary is P, P or T. Or T. <laughs> the kind of questions they will ask you. Especially people know that you know something small. You'll be in, they will ask a question, then the person will ask you some weird question. Say P or T. So you can't make up your mind how it starts. How do you pass? Very, 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 very interesting. Anyway, we have to take a break. When we come back, we'll take it to Parliament. Um, the Speaker has been announcing two Supreme Court nominees that has been put before Parliament. That led to a very interesting outcome. We'll be right back after that. Hisense is best known for all your electronic appliance needs, such as television, refrigerator, chest freezer, and air conditioners. But did you know we have laser television, gas cooker, washing machine, smartphones, sound systems, 
water dispenser, microwave, blender, rice cooker, kettle, iron, air fryer, just to mention a few. Hisense is the only electronic company in Ghana that gives you five years manufacturer defect warranty. Visit any of our showrooms in Accra, also in Tema, Kumasi, Takrade, Takwa, Mankesim, Obuase, Sunyani, Techima, Tamale, Ohoi, Kofodia to purchase any Hisense product at the best price. Hisense means best quality, best durability, best for energy efficiency, best for affordability, best for style, and best for technology. You can always get in touch on 0302-55-0000 or go to www.hisense.com.gh. We are also available on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Hisense Ghana. Hisense, everyday prices for everyday people. Have you heard? Fed Eye Care and Vision Center is at it again. Oh. They are giving a 50% discount on everything, including glasses and glaucoma tests to everyone 60 years and above. And this is actually an everyday thing. In Kea Nyemi Lele, Keji O is 60 years. Kea, Ni Ote, Fed Eye Care and Vision Center. Chepe no, Abaha have 50% discount. Ya hing me glassy. Ke glaucoma test, Fed no bafi ya jeme. And ya mi show he no ya e. Ya Fed Eye Care and Vision Center. Piano no. Na ba have fifty percent discount. Anya mi dem mi kote da ike Vision Center since Sierra. Send a be ya mi nzume nyo fifty percent discounta. Wadi M L one glasses. Ena fe glucoma tester. Wanya ne son faso. Ne mum kai se. Wene wanya fresh ya e dressing ya e de kwenye pen pen son kuto. Yes. So let's all go to Third Eye and Vision Center at Airport Residential Area, close to the Association International School, opposite the Mirage Residence or North Ridge, on the same premises as Sunny FM. You can call Third Eye Care and Vision Center on 0245-938389. The Third Eye Care and Vision Center, your total eye care solution provider. Mm-hmm. Eso e ban herbal center na nyuma pa wa ye e wo my kenu wunti se se wo bi ono bi a se yo boni dia ni yes at your phone pa aye juma sono eno nti total drivers ni taxi drivers so o wo do o man ban no e bo ne e chira ya re sa ban herbal center e de ma se ye no pemu ya die na no amadamfu e fie me no nya ankwansia no e ho na ye de no koye na ne nkase mu e bu se pen na okoye no ya nchire na Yanchi, what the Ahabina at Soso? Oh, if you did a brandy, ah, what the Chilebia inform Sono, now what the Ahabai any sound coniano, Nedi and Nijenia Sumia Bifi. Found some more Yadia Dimbra, Nibia Yarisa, our Pan Herbal Center, and Crayola Shebi Community 16 Road, Yabe Bose City, Frere 0244 988004. At your phone, and you're the way you know the journey. Pum, 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 Se play na lande, eso still ya te front wa, and ya she half a ya jia drink, and ya steam, and ya say just seven unti ya siya dede na zero dot five fm. And of course, before I forget, uh, happy birthday to Jonathan Tewia Fio, Mister Jonathan Tewia Fio. Uh, is a long time listener to Radio Gold. Always listening, Mister Jonathan Tewia Fio. A happy happy birthday today to you. Today is your birthday. RC graduates whose children are in peak lyceum. Anyway, uh, <laughs> see, the interesting thing is that I went to Sugar Coffee early primary A. When it was going to rain, when they see dark clouds, they close us. We did not see the difference between being beaten outside and being in the classroom. Either way, the rain will beat you. <laughs> so they will close you. To go home so that they, you will not be their responsibility anymore. It will be the responsibility of your parents. We are the ones who grow and come and send our children to uh, a pick what? Pick Lyceum. Thank you. <laughs> well, <laughs> we have to take it to Parliament. Uh, uh, Obi- I, you see, this is the Speaker of Parliament, actually. You know, a few weeks ago, we we're discussing the matter of five Supreme Court nominees who the, the Herald newspaper reported were rejected by the Judicial Council. These are not those nominees. Before those nominees, even when before the Judicial Council, these nominees were, before the Judicial Council, they were replacements, sort of. Two judges, one has retired, one is supposed to be to retire. 
So they were there awaiting the retirement before the approval is done and they are taken to parliament. One of the judges has, has retired, the other one will retire soon. So the nominations were yesterday announced in parliament. Listen to the speaker of parliament announce the nominations of the two justices, uh, two uh, Supreme Court justice nominees. It's dated 16 July 2024. It reads, Mr. Speaker, reappointment of justices of the Supreme Court. I hope this finds you in good health and spirits. As a result of pending and projected vacancies on the Supreme Court, occasioned by the retirement of Mr. Justice Ni Ashikoti on 2nd October 2023, and the pending retirement of Justice Mariama Ousu on 18th November 2024, respectively, the Judicial Council advised me on 24th May 2024 by a letter under the hand of its chairperson, Chief Justice Jetrude Tokonu, of his nominations for my appointment to a court of, of their replacements in accordance with Article 1442 of the Constitution of the Republic. In order to achieve full current complement of the justice of the court for the next legal year, I have decided to appoint to the Supreme Court as advised by the Judicial Council and subject to the satisfactory conclusion of the processes set out in Article 1442 of the Constitution, the following persons. One, Justice Sophia Ruzeta Oduokwa Benasco Esa and two Professor Richard Frimpong Opong. You have to apply the new standing orders in this matter. And as we proceed on recess, I expect that the committee will sit during the course of the recess to consider these nominees. And any time we resume, we will consider them on the floor of the House to see whether there is any full complement that they want to, to make sure is maintained. Which full complement, I am not aware of. And so we are being called for, through this letter, as a House, to look at the issue of a full complement of the Supreme Court. Should we be 13? Should we be 15? Should we be 20, 40, or 100? It's for this House to decide. And I'm urging you to look at this issue during the constitutional reforms or to pass legislation to give an upper limit as to how many can be at the Supreme Court of a country of 33 million people. Okay, so hmm, a few things. The President writes a letter to the Speaker saying that currently um, one justice retired. So Justice Miyashikoti, remember Justice Miyashikoti was an academic at the University of Ghana, professor of law, who was, uh, who was appointed to the Supreme Court by President Kufuadu, nominated, uh, approved by Parliament, and appointment confirmed uh, to the Supreme Court by President Kufuadu. That is Justice Ni Ashikote. Now, Justice Ni Ashikote, according to the letter, retired on um, 2nd October 2023. So he's already retired. Then there is Mariama Ousu. Mariama Ousu was also appointed to the Supreme Court by President Kufuadu. So these are his appointees. Also retired 18th November 2024. Mariama Ousu was uh, always went through the system. So High Court, Court of Appeal, then at the Supreme Court. So 18th November, he, she will retire. She has not retired yet. She retired on, she will retire on 18th November 2024. Now after the retirement of Justice Niashikote, 
the number of Supreme Court justices currently, including the Chief Justice, is 15. 15 currently, including um, Justice Mariama Ousu, who retired in November, not yet, has not retired yet. But before they even go there, he, he says he's been advised by the Chief Justice to fill the vacancy before the vacancy is created. So it means that there were 16, they're taking the number back to the 16. So the Chief Justice plus 15 other justices. The speaker says, reading the letter, it gives him the inkling that the president is also asking them to also consider whether or not he is right when he says that those vacancies need to be filled to maintain the status quo. So he says there are questions of the upper limit or um, full complement, because he talked about a full complement of the Supreme Court, that I've given you this job, look at it, when you are looking, I also consider what you think should be the full complement of the Supreme Court or the upper limit of the Supreme Court. That this can be done through legislation or constitutional reforms. Now, this extra comments, additional comments of the speaker, annoyed a member of parliament for seven years or so who was not happy and decided to tell the speaker his mind. The speaker did not take it kindly. Listen. For consideration and report to the House. Please, you have to apply the new standing orders in this matter. But in giving you the information, I give you an idea of the expectations of the people of Ghana. That is for you to consider as part of the reports and for the House to decide as to whether we will approve or disapprove those nominations. His Excellency clearly stated that he's constitutionally injuncted to do what he has done. And so it's now for you to also look at. Honorable member, you want to speak? If you want, I will grant you the opportunity. Yes. Mr. Speaker, with all due respect to your chair, these preliminary remarks you are making are prejudicial, and I believe that as representing the good people of Serbia also, it doesn't lie in your mouth to remind us of the things that you said. Thank you. This is a completely rude remark, and I can send you out of the house now. It lies in my authority to do so. You represent the good people of Sefi Wiasu. I represent the whole country. Please, my child, take him out of the house. My child, take him out of the house. I will not interrogate such disrespect. It lies in my mouth. Well, the speaker says, that particular comment, says it does not lie in your mouth to give us that reminder. He says, um, yeah, I represent the people as a view also. He says, speaker says he represents the entire country. Mm -hmm. He doesn't represent the entire country. What is his constituency? His constituency is Ghana. What is his vote in parliament? His vote in parliament. Like, uh, does he vote in parliament? No, but that's... A, but, Okay, yes, yes. Okay, so that is your only issue. But does it take away the fact that the comment is from you disagree that the comment is rude? In from fact, do, the comment this, this is this is Dr. Um uh, uh, the name again. Dr. Kwekwefri. Do, Dr. Kwekwefri. Uh -huh. This is Dr. Kwekwefri. Now listen to the comments he made. Committee for consideration and report to the house. Please, you have to apply the new standing orders in this matter. But in giving you the information, I give you an idea of the expectations of the people of Ghana. That is for you to consider as part of the reports and for the House to decide as to whether we will approve or disapprove those nominations. His Excellency clearly stated that 
is constitutionally injuncted to do what he has done. And so it's now for you to also look at. Honorable member, you want to speak? If you want, I will grant you the opportunity. Yes. Mr. Speaker, with all due respect to your chair, these preliminary remarks you are making are prejudicial, and I believe that as representing the good people of Sevi also, it doesn't lie in your mouth to remind us of the things that you said. Thank you. This is a completely rude remark. And I can send you out of the house now. It lies in my authority to do so. You represent the good people of Sefi. We are so. I represent the whole country. Please, my child, take him out of the house. My child, take him out of the house. I will not intervene such disrespect. And like, and, and he was actually my child out of the house, Dr. Kweku Efriye, uh, who is the member of parliament for Sefi Yosu. And, oh, okay, subsequent things did happen. We joined on the line by uh, lawyer Paul Kumi, constitutional legal practitioner. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Good morning. My pleasure. I hope you're doing well. Great. First of all, let me start by asking whether you have some issues with the speaker's action when it came to the issues that were raised by uh, the fact that the member of parliament of Sevi also drew his attention to the fact your comments are prejudicial and it does not lie in your mouth to say that. Was the speaker he right when not, he said it was rude? Yes, he did not draw the speaker's attention to anything. It was simply rude. What the speaker was saying was in respect of a general issue. You know, there has been an issue about the capping. There has been a complaint that to the extent that there is no capping, the president can appoint as many persons to the Supreme Court as he wishes. So the speaker was more or less suggesting to members that if they felt so strongly about that issue of the president appointing many people to the Supreme Court, they know what to do. And he indicated a need for them to initiate a bill to ensure that at least such a cap can be brought about. He might have misconstrued that statement by the speaker as affecting those two persons probably who were going to be vetted. So that probably he was saying those things to ask members of the appointment committee probably to refuse the appointment of those two persons as nominated by the president. He got the whole thing wrong. You see, and then what is more, he had made that remark and I think because he had not spoken into the microphone, it is presumed as a statement not made or heard by the speaker. So to the extent of the speaker even saying that, oh, Honorable, I thought I heard you say something. Would you want to repeat it? Then you get up I'm sure a lot of you have probably watched the clip. Yes. The body language and everything. I mean, it's so, so insulting. And one did not expect somebody who calls himself an honorable member of parliament to start such a behavior. And the choice of words, that it does not lie in his mouth. It does lie in the mouth of the speaker to advise as to what can be done to, as it were, check something which all of us are complaining about. So if you misconstrued or misunderstood what the speaker was saying, one well, would have expected him to have said, oh, Mr. Speaker, what you are saying, is it in respect of these two appointees or nominees or what? But not to get up, talk, and then violently even uh, uh, switch yourself up on the microphone. I'm sure you saw it. I mean, it's not, it's not good enough. You see, some of us are a bit worried we are not worried just because of politics, but we are worried because there are a lot of up-and-coming persons who are looking for persons who can be their role models. So it is possible that this honorable member of parliament might have had somebody who is always looking up to him as a role model and will want to become what he is currently one day. 
will will start a walkout. I mean, I mean, he's being dismissed from from parliament by the speaker. Will this be a very positive thing to that particular person who is looking up to him for inspiration or to see him as a role model? That's one thing which is a bit hurting. Well, so it seems to then you agree with the action of the speaker to walk more in. than agreeing with him. Yes, I know that the, the speaker might have done some of these things out of anger, and he, 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 he's a bit human. Um, and so, uh, probably, what the speaker could have asked him to do would have would have been to ask him to withdraw what he said, and then uh, and apologize. Now, if you fail to do that, then the speaker can walk him out. But those are options available to the speaker. The speaker, by his assessment of the whole situation, felt that he has been disrespectful to him. And that's the reason for which he asked him to go out. Note something which happened. When the doctor was going out, at least I'll give that one to him. When he had given me, as to be walked out by the marshal, before he um, left the chamber, he realized he, you know, kept seat. I mean, he had to now bow in, 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 in respect to the chair. So that is what he should have had at the back of his mind at the time he got up and was talking and was showing such gross disrespect. Interesting. Now, having said that, what do you make of uh, the tone of the letter that the speaker read? from the president. Do you agree with the president when he talks about the, the fact that he needed to make these nominations to ensure that the, uh, the Supreme Court does the full complement of judges? Good. So you realize that that was what might have compelled the speaker to make the, the comment. You see, when you read Article 128, 1 and 2, it, it talks about the least number of persons who should be Supreme Court justices. You should have the, the chief justice and not less than nine other persons. Now, we now have about 15, close, getting closer even to 20. Now, so when the president should come and be saying that, oh, there are two people who are living, and so we need to have some replacement for those two people. It means we are gradually making that current number as an established number, which should not be lower than what uh, it should be. And so the view of the speaker was that, judging from the justification which is being given for the appointment of these two other, I mean, for the nomination of these uh, two persons to the Supreme Court, there's the need for us to probably see if we can do something about it. Indeed, when you look at the timeline that is required, even for what he, the speaker, is suggesting, it is something that cannot be done within the life of this particular uh, parliament. I mean, looking at the um, the campaign, which is just of 120 or so days away, you know, so it is it's not going to be possible. But I believe that he just threw this one out, you know, so that even if it is not done during the lifetime of this particular parliament, any new parliament which will come after uh, 2024, that is the 2025 parliament, you probably consider that one as one of the things that you should you know, look at. Fortunately, this particular issue regarding the appointment of Supreme Court justices are not part of the entrenched clause. It's something that can be done, you know, by Parliament itself. But of course, after it has gone through various processes, as indicated in the Constitution. But is it the letter also not sub? <laughs> Don't you have a because of the the tone of the letter? Is is there not a possibility that maybe a member of the the appointments committee who disagrees with the thoughts of the president? Because the president seemed to be saying. Now, as far as he is concerned, the full complement of the Supreme Court is a chief justice plus 15 other Supreme Court justices. Or did I get that wrong? That, that's what he is suggesting. No, what I'm saying is that what is clearly stated in the Constitution 
is the chief justice, and that nine other justices, you know, that's the least number that we should have at the Supreme Court as judges. There is no cap, so it can get to 100, it can get to 2,000, if there are such number of justices who can fill the Supreme Court, right? And so, if anybody is going to make any observation, and he is going to make reference to the fact that the Supreme Court is being packed, or we are having too many members, or too many justices being sent to the Supreme Court, that argument will not wash because the Constitution did not give a cap. What you can use against any particular nominee may be the fact that he's not of high moral character, he doesn't have the way we know to be effective as, um, as, a, as, as an appointee of the Supreme Court. Those are the issues you can raise. But if you are going to be talking about numbers, that one wouldn't watch now because the Constitution will not support you. So whether the president is of the view that 15 is the, the act number or the optimum number with which he thinks that the Supreme Court can work with, that's another matter. You realize that in this particular uh, appointment, the president makes it clear that he was advised by the judicial council Right, and it is based upon that that he has also nominated this person. So the earlier letter that went round, where the chief justice was suggesting names to the uh, to the, uh, to the president, obviously was wrong because that is not how that should be done. So I believe that what has been done in respect of these two nominees is a way as espoused in the constitution. And I believe that these two officers will have to be looked at in terms of their expertise and what they are going to bring on board. And to the extent that there is no cap currently, I do not think that we can use that as an issue to, as it were, deprive them of the opportunity given them. But do you agree with the speaker when he says that ultimately we have to look at the issue of a, a, a limit? Yes, I agree with the speaker to the extent that, yes, we will need to have a cap. Because if we don't do that, we will continue going on and on and on and on. So his remarks yesterday was essentially to tell the members of parliament that we are not just sitting down and be complaining about some of these things. There are ways by which this cap can be brought about. And so let's go ahead, get a bill, you know, go through the various processes, and then we as parliament can approve of it. This, as I said, this is not one of the intense ones. When it comes to the intense process, it will have to go for a referendum. This particular one will not have to go for a referendum. It will just have to go through the council stage, some gazetting, publication for some number of months, and then parliament can pass it, and then the president can, you know, um, assent to it, and that one becomes a new provision of the constitution. But let me conclude with you by asking you, do you know um, any of the two persons who have been put forward, uh, Justice Bernard Kwesa, uh, Professor F uh, Rich, uh, Richard Frimpong Opong? Yes, I know Professor Frimpong Opong. He happens to be my mate at the, at the law school. During our year, he swept almost all the prizes. He, he is a gift to the Supreme Court. And he is one person that I am really, really excited to see him. The kind of contribution that he's making worldwide, especially in Canada and others. Um, I thank God that at least he's found it necessary to forget about the dollars and to come down to Ghana and then put his expertise also at the disposal of his motherland. In respect of the other uh, nominee, she is also one good lady. She is also very good at law, having been a state attorney and all that. So she also has a full mastery over the, the, the law. And I believe that these two persons, um, when approved, they will be a huge asset to the Supreme Court. Now, always a pleasure talking to you. Same here. 
La Paul Kumi is a constitutional lawyer. Um, was speaking to us on the nominations that have been put before.